check, check. All right, so the fifth and final heat race makes its way up onto the raceway now. And slated to go from the inside of the first row. Logan Hatch's Northeast Custom Flatbeds, number 18H. I don't see Hatch. And that'll put Chip Constantino up to the inside of the first row in the uh, Dave Blaney Matson Overhead Doors, number 10 ride. Garrett Poland up to the outside of him. And then Riley Gill in the Lafargeville Toyota, number 57, on the inside of that second row. Up to the outside of him will be Justin House in the number five. House out of Gloversville with the Adirondack Express lube entry. And back on the inside of row number three, the 2JD, that should be Jared Dyer. Outside him in the 21, Quinn Wallace. And out of Sussex, New Jersey, in the Pepsi number 20, it is the man himself, Brett the Jet, Brett Hearn. One lap on the board now. Chip Constantino showing the way. Second spot right now, the five of Justin House. Poland holding down the port. Hang on. Hearn and Jarrett Dyer get together, and that's going to bring out Yellow. Quinn Wallace into the hay bales as well to avoid as Hearn and Jarrett Dyer in the Ronnie Johnson look-alike machine get together. Dyer from Rotterdam in the zero racing entry. Him and Hearn will head to the tail, as well as it looks like the five of house. So that will promote Poland up to the number two spot with Chip Constantino still out in front. As we work the line up here, Quinn Wallace currently in the fourth and final transfer spot with the 21W. The Constantino and Poland on the front coming to the restart cone out of turn number four. The green flag is out and we're back to it. Constantino and Poland lean on each other down the straightaway. Gill trying to get involved. Now Wallace goes around the outside of him for third. Also trying to work the top right now, Jared Dyer, and hang on. Riley Gill into the hay bales in turn number four, and that's going to bring out Yellow once again. So Gill goes from a transfer spot to the tail. Jared Dyer also in trouble in turn number two. Three laps shown complete on the lap counter just outside the second turn as Jared Dyer is able to get going once again. Looks like we're going to be ready to go next time by out of turn number four. So Constantino and Poland, Quinn Wallace, Jared Dyer, those are your four transfer cars right now. Hearn one spot out with Justin House and Riley Gill. Back underway. Poland to the inside of Chipper. Hearn looking inside Dyer now as they go down the back straight away. Side by side, Quinn Wallace trying to get around Poland. 
Jared Dyer trying to go three wide in the middle. Constantino running away with it. Hurt on the outside. A pull on it. Puts him in the hay bales. Yellow back out. Hearn with a run to the outside of Garrett Poland. Turned out to the bottom to try to get back in line. And Poland ends up taking a trip into the hay bales. Top four transfer to the main. Looking to go green next time by Chip Constantino has not been seriously challenged so far. Quinn Wallace, Jarrett Dyer looking to change that. Brett Hearn right now riding in the fourth and final transfer spot. Riley Gill, Justin House in the five. Garrett Poland in the 17 as we go back to green off turn number four. Oh, and Wallace does not fire at all. Quinn Wallace does not get going. And that created a massive problem at the start at the two to go sign now. Jared Dyer trying to work the top. Hearn trying to work underneath him. Quinn Wallace just ahead of them. White flag is out and there's trouble. Justin House has got a problem. Chip Constantino is gonna win it going away. Second's gonna go to Brett Hearn. Oh, Jared Dyer, there is nothing left of the two car. Constantino, Hearn, Wallace, and Dyer, the top four. Now, I, I know these guys are competitive. This is supposed to be fun, but unfortunately, sometimes stuff like that happens, like happened to Dyer's card, and that's not necessarily fun because you got to fix all that stuff. Well, it's fun for us, Paul, and it's fun for, uh, for everybody here taking it in today. But, yeah, no, trouble, not the way Jared Dyer wanted to go, and, and he's... Fortunately, he's made it to the A-Main. He's going to have a little bit of time during the con to work on that cart. Uh, but, yeah, not the way he wanted to end that heat race, I'm sure. All right, so we are going to do the redraw here on the uh, front stretch in about five minutes, and that will be for the 20 drivers who have already qualified, except there's no number one pill, like I said. The pole is going to be auctioned off to the highest bidder, but spots 2 through 20 will still be open in the redraw. Following the redraw, then we'll have the consolation races. Each of those consolation races advance two cars. And then we have provisionals and buy-ins, just like any series race would. We'll tag those on the back of the field, and that'll make up the starting field for our Sunflower 50 Race for a Cause. And again, if you're watching on Facebook and you'd like to make a donation to help the Veterans and Community Housing Coalition, visit their website. It's vchcny.org. VCHCNY.org. They help a homeless or at risk of becoming homeless veterans and their families over a seven-county area here in the Capital District. A great cause, no question about it. And, Paul, while we've got a minute, I wanted to ask you about this. When I heard that you were going to be here today, I was excited for you because, uh, as uh, many of the people that are with us know, um, you are uh, famous, well, for a number of things, but, of course, you're your TV role on Rush Hour on Dirt uh, back in the 90s and the early 2000s. A number of go-karts that are here today, uh, you know, bearing likenesses to uh, to cars that, um, you know, you covered uh, when Rush Hour on Dirt was was on the air. That's got to be kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, take you back a little bit. Yeah, I love seeing the uh, I love seeing the uh, lookalike or the throwback schemes like uh, Brett Hearn's throwback scheme. That dates back to, I want to say, somewhere maybe around 1988, I think, if memory serves me correctly. Of course, you know, when you get to my age, things start getting a little fuzzy and a little hazy. But um, also love the fact that we've got people representing different states. We've got a couple of Massachusetts drivers here. Uh, we've got the contingent, uh, the, the Gills and uh, some of the others that came from the North Country. Uh, uh, race up at uh, the uh, Ken Am Speedway, a uh, place that I've had uh, the pleasure of being at a time or two over the course of the years. This is, this is cool. I love something like that. This is like field of dreams for race cars. Think about it. We built a racetrack in a field, and the drivers came. No, it, it's it's almost exactly like that, really. And this is this event has grown so much in such a short amount of time that it's it's come to the point where 
uh, John Dumont and the Perrys and everybody that puts this event on has literally had to cap off the entries uh, so that we don't end up with, you know, 100 go-karts here uh, in, in a situation where we've got to be here for, for eight hours. So it's really remarkable uh, what uh, Johnny and, and the guys from DKM and the Perrys have been able to do here in such a short amount of time. And uh, Big Jim uh, on the video this year and last year both. And, um, you know, being able to get this on Facebook Live and broadcast it to the people. And um, it's it's really it's really been a great thing. And, and for them to go ahead and give uh, all the money to a Veterans Community Housing Coalition uh, is, is absolutely fantastic as well. Yeah, the amount of money that they've raised, uh, I, I don't know the official dollar figure, but I've heard the unofficial dollar figure. And my eyes lit up like it was Christmas Day when I heard that. Very so. good. And they, they've, they've continued to improve the racetrack over the years as well. I know you mentioned uh, a little bit of banking. Uh, that's uh, something that's different for this year. And uh, the hay bales on the outside are, are considerably more uh, substantial than uh, what they have been in, in years past. And we've gone from having all the sponsor billboards uh, on the outside of the racetrack. Too many of them got knocked down. And now they're, they're in the infield where people can uh, take a look at them all day long. So, okay.